Ecology Lesson 1. Question number one. Please, first of all, write in complete sentences. You do not have to write the question, you just have to write the answer in a complete sentence and not just a one word answer. So you, if, you, it's, if it could be a one word answer, you're gonna turn it into a sentence. So explain the answer. Number one, what type of bird is Brutus? So here's Brutus, this handsome dude. Now he's turned his back toward you. I told you he's a little camera shy. He's also a little camouflaged because it's the couch is actually gray also in the background. Um, well, that's a hint. So what type of bird is Brutus? Is your question number one. So you instead of just writing the answer in one, one or two words, you'd say Brutus is a whatever he is. So that's number one. You're gonna stop, stop the video, pause the video, and you're gonna answer number one. Welcome back. So hopefully you've paused the video to answer the question. Ecology is really the interaction between living things and their environment. And I know you read an article about the effect uh, cats, house cats that have been released, or sometimes they just call them feral cats, uh, that they've been uh, released or People that usually keep them inside, let them out, and they've gone wild. Uh, their effect on the population of wild birds. And this is a big problem uh, because it's causing a decline in the wild bird population. And in fact, they've estimated just billions of wild birds are being killed by these wild cats. In fact, it's the number one cause, or human cause, the decline in these wild birds. These cats that have been released. So. Question number two is I'm going to pose a scenario. You're going to stop, pause the video, and think. So here's your scenario. We have these cats now, and we're in quarantine. So let's say uh, it was released. Uh, there's an announcement on social media for everybody to release their household cats so they're not in quarantine anymore. And all of a sudden, all these household cats are wondering about what effect do you think that would have on the wild bird population and why? That's number two. So stop and think, what effect would that have on the wild bird population and why? What effect would releasing all these house cats that have been in quarantine now have on the wild bird population? Stop and think. Welcome back. <laughs> this is number three scenario. The scenario now is involving these cats and birds again. One of the strategies at a lot of veterinary school, veterinary hospitals, is to collect these cats, trap them, not kill them trap, but trap them live, and then sterilize them. So neuter them or spay them. So if it's a male, neuter. If it's a female, it's called spay. They do that with dogs. Obviously, they do it with cats as well. So the plan is to collect them all, and then release them back in the wild because uh, one thing we could do is hunt them, but in the United States that would not be considered appropriate or like politically correct, I guess you could say. Um, whereas other countries are actually doing this, like Australia is actually hunting, they're killing some of the, the cats because of the, it's affecting their wild bird population. So the question is, what effect do you think this sterilization of uh, these cats that have been released from the house has on the wild bird population. So that's number three. So stop and think. Welcome back. Okay, we're just going to, now this, you talked, you actually, when you read the article, you learned about the interaction between a couple populations, a couple different species actually. Uh, wild cats or house cats, not technically wild cats, their they're house cats have been released in the wild. And wild bird populations, so many populations, not just two actually. Um, so many populations, many species of wild birds are actually being affected by the, the house cat that has been released in the wild. Um, so that's an interaction between species. All right, so we have the predator would be the cat in that case, 
and the prey would be the bird. So predator eats the prey. So you should know that. Predator eats the prey. That's an interaction between species. Species always interact. Every living thing on earth interacts. Except for right now, we're in quarantine, so they're even, we're not even interacting. We're interacting now, though, digitally. But there's less physical interaction than we probably would normally have as humans. But generally, every living thing on the planet is not in isolation. It interacts with other species. It interacts with its environment. Like these birds that have, there's an interaction with these house cats. Right? There's an interaction, every living thing. There's nothing that lives in isolation. So if you affect one species or one population, it affects the species in that environment. So that's why it's very important to save species because we don't know the effect of the loss of that species is going to have on other living things. We don't know. There's so much we don't know. That gets me to talking about population. So we talked about the wild bird populations, we talked about the cat population. But we cannot talk about populations unless we talk about species. So a species, a species is, well first of all, I'm a species. Human is the common name or homo sapiens sapien. And Brutus, which you can't even see, he doesn't even want to participate. My host is actually leaving what we've set. Brutus is a species also. What is a species? A species is a group of individuals that can breed and produce fertile offspring. So, in other words, they're a group of living things that can breed and produce fertile, which means it can have babies. Offspring are the babies. So fertile ha can have offspring, and offspring are the babies. So in other words, it's a living thing, living things that can breed and produce babies that can have babies. That's what a species is. Now Brutus is leaving the set, so I have to try to get him again up, up. Up. <laughs> okay, come on, Brutus. Up. Up. Up, up. 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 Okay, up. Come on. Okay, so here, Brutus is here. And Brutus is, has, every species now has two, it has a common name and a scientific name. Common and scientific. Common name for me is human. Scientific, homo sapien, subspecies sapien. But common name is what you use most of the time, elephant, zebra, parrot, whatever. Scientific name is in Latin, and it's usually two words long, and it's usually hard to pronounce. And it's written in italics. So if you're Google searching, and you see a name that's italicized, two words, that's the dead giveaway. It's a scientific name of that species. So here we have a species. His species name, his common name, is African Grey. So his common name is African Grey. And he's not participating. There he is. African Grey. Over here. Show him. Show what you have. African gray. His scientific name, Sidicus erythicus. Based in Latin, Sidicus means parrot. When you write a scientific name, first word capitalized, second word lowercase. It's a it's a proper name. So in it's a scientific name, it would be written in italics. But if you can't, if you're handwriting it, you would underline it. Okay, so his scientific name, Brutus, that doesn't look right. <laughs> Zydicus erythicus, scientific name. So we have a common name. Right direction is the question. 
African Grey, Zion DNA, Sidicus Cerithicus. That is the, what a species it says species name. African Grey, common. He's chewed a little already, you can see. A population, like I showed you the turkey population outside. Population is a group of the same species in the same place. Now, in ecology, that's what the population is. This is not talking about a total population. So if you think of the human total population, it's like seven, over 7 billion now. That's the total of all on Earth. But if we're talking in general, in ecology, the population is a group, same, the same species, same place. Same species, same place, population. When populations change, they can go up, they can go down, or they can stay the same. It affects the species around them. So the birds, those wild birds, when the cat populates, the wild, I mean the feral cat's population goes like this, the birds are going to get eaten more. Their population is going to go down. So there's a couple ways you can increase the population and a couple ways you can decrease the population. Before we get to that, I want you to stop and think. Number four, number four question is, what is a species? That's number four, stop and think. <laughs> Hello, welcome back. We have Brutus, he's camera shy, so I always have to turn him around to face the camera. My host has got to get comfortable with the camera, both of us can work on this. Welcome back. We talked about a population. Definition of population is a group of living things that are the same species, same place. Same species, same place. Population wild turkeys, there's a video I showed you on our YouTube. Or please watch that. That's a population. It's part of a population of wild turkeys. In other words, they're all the same species and they're living in the same area. Population, same species, same place. Populations can go up, like the human population, exponentially increase, 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 increase. We're going up it's over seven billion, um, and that's basically due to industrialization. Uh, medicine, advancements in the development of antibiotics, um, people are living longer, things like that. Or the population can decrease, right, like the, all these wild birds, and most actually, almost ever, many other species other than humans. In fact, in fact, most of them are going this way. Or they can stay the same, all right? Now, if they stay the same, that doesn't mean they don't, or none that are born or none that die. It would be the amount of born, ones that are born, equals the amount that die. All right? So how, there's a couple ways you can increase the population. There's a couple ways you can decrease. One way to increase population, increase birth rate, birth, more births. Fertility goes up. One way you can decrease Mortality, mortality, death, decrease. More deaths, decrease population, that's mortality. Births, increase population, deaths, decrease. Another way you can increase the population is immigration, immigrate, M. Start, this one starts with an I, it means coming in. In, think of I N M. immigrate. Immigration, if a new population's come in, to that environment this increases the size of the population. Now we're talking about population in the ecology sense, local population. If a new ones, new animals come in that environment, new same species come in, they're going to be more in the population. On the other hand, if some leave, migrate, out, away, exit, emigrate. <clears throat> so emigrate starts with an E, like exit starts with an E. Immigrate, coming in, starts with an I, like in, starts with an I. Emigrate, out, 
immigrate in, immigrate out, immigrate in, immigrate out, immigrate in, immigrate, coming in, increase the population. Emigrate, going out, decreases the population. So a couple ways you can increase the population is you can have more births, have more immigration, I. A couple ways you can decrease the population and more deaths or mortality and emigrate. Next question, stop and think. Number five, what would happen to a population of birds in which some of them actually migrate to another location? So what would happen to a population of birds if some of them migrate to another location? And what is the name of that process? So stop and think. Welcome back. Number six. What would happen to a population of house cats if they were and released, they're released outside and they are not neutered or spayed, they're not sterilized? and they start breeding more. What would happen to the population of those cats? Stop and think, number six. Number six. Number seven. Stop and think. What is the difference between immigration and emigration? So immigrate, emigrate. Stop and think. Number eight. I can't get the fingers up right anymore. <laughs> Number eight, what do we call a group of living things of the same species that live in the same place? What do we call that? Stop and think. Number nine, stop and think. What do we call the process in which new individuals are coming into the population and how would that affect the population size? Stop and think. And the last one, number 10, I want you to explain the relationship of the predator and prey, the house cat released in the wild with the wild birds. Give me some scenarios relating to the factors that affect population size. So births, deaths, emigration, emigration. And relate that, give me two scenarios relating to the house cats and the birds. And then we are done with this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed seeing Brutus. Until next time, rock stars, rock em. <laughs>